Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Superman the movie. So this is another childhood film. Comes at the right time. Magic. I had always been around comics even before I could remember much. Or my grandfather used to uh, have a um, newsstand in Grand Central Station. And at the time, you know, everything was on racks and it would always bring home comic books. So they were always around me. And particularly Spider-Man, Superman, Batman, you know, and even some odds and ends. Uh, I had a fire later in my life. Uh, I think it was about, I don't know, maybe a year or two after the movie, 79-ish, 80. And I lost all the comics. I had some great comic books, uh, early ones too. In any case, we're going to talk about Superman... The movie from 1978, directed by Richard Donner, and the cast, I mean, we have Marlon Brando, Gene Hackman, Christopher Reeve, Ned Beatty, Jackie Cooper, Jackie fucking Cooper, Glenn Ford, Trevor Howard, Margot Kidder, I mean, and when you find out all the people who were up for the role, all the behind the scenes stuff, it's just amazing, but on its own, it is a wonderful great movie it holds up to the test of time what the fuck was that all right it holds up to this test of time it really hits the emotional aspect to feel the heart of a hero now it's not going to hold up with today's special effects and when you think about it the fucking movie is about a plot to steal land and it's not very superhero feet wise where you're going to see amazing feats well i mean going back in time is one thing but you get what i'm trying to say this is not a spectacular alien invasion taking on the big baddie that is done well in the second one however the first one doesn't have that now originally it was filmed as a two movie uh experience meaning richard donna they had scripts, like 500-page scripts for two movies. So he filmed the first one and the second one, 75% of the second one, before he stopped filming on it. And this is like a, a, a weird thing, right? I mean, we hear about the Lord of the Rings, you know, filming all three. Well, this was done in 1970, what, seven? And it was a decision, it was disagreement, so he ended his directing like 75% through the movie. Now, the envisionment came from the producers in, uh, like, 1973, and then uh, they bought the rights. It took till 1977 to get it off the ground. And this is an insane story. You hear about all the people involved, and you, you tend to forget it was, it was nominated for three Academy Awards, was given a Special Achievement Academy Award. At the time, it's groundbreaking. And I'll say it again, it might not hold up special effects wise in the uh, in the grand scale of spectacular fights. I mean, Civil War, Endgame, Justice League. I mean, not that they're the best movies, but the the scale and the uh, ferocity of the fights and the vision is just not going to happen here. But the heart of the hero, the portrayal, the acting, the directing, the music, John Williams. This is a masterpiece, and as a matter of fact, it was selected for pers preservation by the Library of Congress's National Film Registry. That happened in 2017. I'm going to say, because of the, you know, moments in my life, going to see, I think it was Superman 2, and we asked people to help us in. I think I just said this in another podcast. I'm a really big superhero fan. I don't care what company, I'm a big science fiction fan in general, um, you know, Lord of the Rings, fantasy, and even horror, I mean, I love it all, I can come back to this movie all the time, the first two movies, even the third one, the fourth one's, uh, you know, and they're not excellent movies, but the franchise was special and dear to me. Just like I could, I love the uh, prequels of Star Wars. I love watching um, The Phantom Menace over and over. And it's like, Qui-Gon's so good. Yeah, I mean, if you wanted me to be a critic, it's not going to be that good. But I think 
Superman from 1970 is a really good movie. Written superbly, acted amazingly. It's just that the scale and the scope of it is not so uh, outlandish and um, in your face, uh, wow, battles and explosions and things like that. So taking that away, the story behind it is even, you know, Marlon Brando, he has to do it in 12 days. They go to film in Italy and it's like, oh, he has all the rest of Warren out. They can't do it. Gene Hackman, same thing. They committed. They got to film them quick. And when they look at Superman, they try to cast Superman, and it was insane. First off, for directing, they wanted Spielberg. And when jo after Jaws came out, well, he already committed to like Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Then there was some guy named Guy Hamilton. I don't know who the fuck he really is. And I'll be honest, that um, more old school, I would guess. Just getting ready. They wanted to do um, Dustin Hoffman who was considered for Superman, turned down Lex Luthor. It, is, it gets inc incredibly insane as this keeps going on because the, the stories are out outrageous. Um, Brando wanted to be uh, portrayed as a suitcase or a bagel <laughs> with just his voice, and they had to use um, flattery to persuade him to be on camera, and they had to use cue cards. Um... This is uh, Paul Newman, Robert Redford, Sylvester Stallone was even in talks. Um, uh, they were going to get the Omen director, by the way, and they settled on Richard Donner, who was going to do the Omen, too. And when you look at Richard Donner's pay and Christopher Reeve, it is a joke compared to everybody else. I think Christopher Reeve, for both movies, Superman 1 and 2, got like $250,000. I mean, that's insane. And they had a, so many rewrites over and over. But the casting is, is just bonkers. So, Burt Reynolds, Robert Redford, turned down the role. Paul Newman, like I said, and even uh, he was offered uh, as the roles of Superman or Lex Luthor or jor -El. They just wanted him in the movie, it seems. Um... Bruce Jenner. <laughs> Bruce Jenner. Oh, shit. Can we not call him that? I don't know. Patrick Wayne was cast, but when John Wayne, his father, was diagnosed with stomach cancer, he, he dropped out. I mean, look at this. This is like, okay, you got Neil Diamond and Arnold Schwarzenegger lobbying hard for the role. James Caan, James Brolin, Lyle Wagner, Christopher Walken, Nick Nolte, John Voight. Perry King were approached. Chris Christopherson and Charles Bronson. Oh, boy. This is like, you, you, you think, right? Christopher Reeve had a nowhere. Uh, this is a combination of just how movies work, right? It's timing. It's who you get. It's your casting directors. There's so many moving parts. There's so many people involved, which is why I talk about the end of credits now. It's just a fucking wall. It doesn't stop. Um, they liked Christopher Reeve. He didn't have the physique. But when he came in and do a screen test, he wows everybody. And they go, look, you know, we want you. We got to wear a, a muscle suit. And he goes, no. <laughs> so the guy who wanted the part, one of these guys, David Prowse, um, trained him and took him from 188 pounds to 212 pounds. Christopher Reeve came in, just just an amazing story. He was yeah, he was paid two hundred fifty thousand dollars for both movies. However, Christopher Reeve, the beautiful human that he was, had always said um, he appreciated what the opportunity gave him. The money was never something he was begrudged about. Because you're looking at um, Brando got three point seven million dollars, two million for Gene Hackman. I mean, this is like insane money. At the time, this movie was the highest, one of the highest budgets, like $55 million. It made $300 million. This is a big deal, and Christopher Reeve getting that amount of money is ridiculously, you know, but he was humble about it, which I love. Really, um, when you look back on him, and 
he's just so charismatic, so charming. You can't help but love him. Uh, I wish he would have had a better, you know, end, but he's got so many charities and his name, his recognition will live on. Like I said, if this is a bad movie that just had a cult following, that'd be one thing, but it's a great movie. It just doesn't have the uh, special effects, spectacular stuff that today's movies have. However, you're going to see such a beautiful portrayal, heartfelt, touching, impactful on so many levels in the superhero genre. And the way they filmed it in the first part is like Krypton, and then it's Smallville, and then Metropolis. Uh, Christopher Reeve's portrayal of Clark Kent. I just... It all, it's just amazing. And talking about the filming and how they got cast and everybody, it's just amazing. Like, how this worked, how Christopher Reeve got chosen, just all around gets you, you know, keeps you, makes you wonder how incredible um, uh, 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 coincidences and crossing of paths have to happen. And, you know, we go, oh, Christopher Reeve, he's still considered the best Superman. And, I'll get it out of the way right now. Man of Steel sucks as a movie. However, the last 20 minutes, 40 minutes, whatever, when he puts the suit on and does battle is amazing. And overall, I like Henry Cavill portraying the character. It's just written shitty. It's filmed. It's fucking horrible in that sense. But I would totally... Uh, I'm up for a Henry Cavill reprising the role, staying... I mean, I like him. He's a good actor. I don't like the Snyderverse bullshit. And if you ask me, Josh Whedon's version where they gave him a little bit of fucking humanity and, you know, cheerfulness just uh, made my day. So, you got Christopher Reeve, his legacy with this movie. It comes at a time I'm seven years old, six years old. Um, going to see the second movie, the third movie, the fourth movie. Um... Captivated by all of them, although growing up and getting older, you see the later movies like, and I still like three, but two is just outstanding. It's my favorite. Um, you know, he's got to fight three Kryptonians, and they do some really savvy stuff. And in here, the one thing that, you know, it breaks you now when you're older is like, okay, Superman flies back in time. I'm not going to give the fucking plot, right? And go through the whole thing. I mean, this is Superman from 1978. And he fucking Lois dies, the earth cracks open or something, and he spins around the earth and reverses time. Now, the visual and the portrayal is ridiculous. It's just insane. Cracks, reef, you know, unforming, and, uh, you know, the planet going back in time. And overall, like the words of his father um, warning him not to do this. But although now looking at it, it seems kind of ridiculous and silly. You can still see the theme. You can still feel the weight of it. This decision, you know, this superhero comes from another planet. For all he knows, he's the only survivor. Comes here, gets amazing abilities, decides he's going to put on a cape and suit and protect people publicly, but he wants to keep a private life. And the world goes to shit. He can't save everybody. The woman he loves dies. Earth is fucked, fault lines are breaking, and he screams, and it's visceral, it's, um, it's just fucking awesome watching this movie again, and he goes and he flies back in time, and all the weight, you forget about how silly it is, you know, you could say, okay, he went so fast, he went back in time and prevented things, maybe that would be a savvier way to do it, uh, but you know, he's spinning around, the earth rotating, you're gonna fucking, it's just so ridiculous, but the weight of it, the emotion, the power, the depth of uh, feelings that it evokes in you is still there. It's like he's going to do something that he shouldn't be doing. He's got the power, he's going to do it. There are a lot of um, talk over the years about the Christian view, or the, you know, because he's a Jewishly cre created character, who was a Jewish uh, person, but how, you know, Catholic symbolism, all that stuff. But I don't give a fuck about that. It's all nonsense. I'm having a movie experience. I'm six or seven years old, and I go through my life and come back to this movie, and I'm never disappointed. I find myself saying, you know, I love the second movie, 
And with the Donner cut, you could watch the second movie and get the first movie encapsulated in it. If you want just the action parts and the, um, you know, let's get going. So you can just watch. But I find myself going back to the first movie anyway. Now that, for me, shows you how well the movie is. And yes, it's very biased. It's dear to my heart. Like I said, a time of magic. Six years old, I'm an incredibly creative in my mind person, you know. It just hit me on never I'm tying towels around my neck, flying around the house. Um, my brother used to uh, put me on his feet. On his, He would lay on his back, put me on his feet, uh, and just pick his feet up, and I would lay on his feet and pretend I was flying. I mean, these moments, you cherish them. They fill you with warmth and love and it's a, these the movie's attached to that. And remember, I gotta have a fucking red cape. Why am I white towels all over the house? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just fucking childhood bliss, wonder, and the, the feelings still come with me. So I I understand that, and I I can't separate that. I do try to be intellectually honest and somewhat of a critical um person at times, and you need to be. So yes, the movie's gonna have flaws. It's not perfection. It's going to have a silly premise. And from what it says in the behind the scenes stuff, it was going to be way campier than it was. And it was toned, that was toned down. It has a nice, serious feel. It has a down to earth, real deep story where the characters, the portrayal, the emotions are more important than spectacle. Very rare, you know, when you look at movies these days. Um,. This good, Marvel does a good blend of it. Wonder Woman was great at doing it. Where Man of Steel, I think, failed. Uh, I don't need a Clark Kent who says, you're not my dad, and the dad's like, oh, maybe you should have let the girl to save you. It just, it's just fucking horrible, this whole fucking tornado. And yeah, I'm going to get uh, beer spilled on me, so I'm going to mangle some guy's $65,000 truck and damage the whole fucking parking lot thing because, you know, I'm Superman. It's just... Snyderverse bullshit crap and give me the fight at the end, cut it, edit it. I'll watch it every fucking day. That I'll give it. Uh, that's Superman the way you want to see him. And in Superman 2, you kind of get that. And uh, this is a cherish, a movie I cherish. It's, you know, in my list of movies that are my favorites. You go to certain times of the year and seeing Christopher Reeve on screen. His smile, and maybe it's from this movie, but everything he's in or has been in, it just uh, makes you feel special that you live in a time where these things happen. And, and like I said, the convergence of my age, you know, and a family you have, you know, brother's a year older, a year and a half older than me. Grandfather owns a newsstand of comic books. And as I grew up, I got the DC comics from my brother. They were a little older and went into Marvel. And then it was like trading back and forth. We were both Marvel and then Image. And Superman's always been there. He'll always be there. That symbol, that S, the hope, the, you know, inspiration is always there. And Christopher Reeve personifies that. In his performance and in his life, you could feel it. It really meant something to him. M much like Mark Hamill with Luke Skywalker. You could feel it, like his humbleness of accepting, like, you know, maybe in the beginning, you know, everybody's human, so you feel your typecast, whatever, but the opportunities you get to love and cherish by fucking humanity forever. Superman the movie. Not much more I can say. It's just a wonderful experience. Heartfelt. Dear to me. Yes, I'll go to part two and get the childhood, you know, rock'em sock'em effects that I want to see. Which is one part in it. Uh, they, Superman gets knocked on the ground. You hear them fighting him and the big guy. And it's just a camera rumbling in the street getting cracked. And then he flies through the pavement and crashes into it. It's like great things, and they try to do wonderful things, but you're limited. Again, um, I love this film. I love the 
actors in it. And for me to know who Jackie fucking Cooper is, you know, one of the most cherished actors, you know, from childhood. I mean, you go back and look up Jackie Cooper. It just goes back. You know, age nine, he fucking started. So much to love here. And you got uh, fucking so many nut jobs. Like, you know, talk about Marlon Brando and just just some iconic um, time uh, episodes and times in our lives. The people they got, the uh, end result, you know. Just wonderful. I totally recommend it. If you think it's outdated, it's still got that heart to it that it carries you through, in my opinion. So, watch Superman again if you want. If it interests you, I think there's so much to still love about it. You don't need to, um, you know, get the special effects and wows. Because I'll watch a nice indie movie or slow paced. Um, what was there? Soup? There was like a. It was a bright burn or something like that. Like a story about a, a Superman went wrong. He was a kid, but it wasn't DC or Superman. But this had to do with a kid. Like not a lot of special effects and wows, but I, I liked it. I was interested in it. So there you go. Is my thoughts on Superman the movie? Again, oh, total recommendation. Just classic, iconic. Everything about. You know, that childhood joy and inspiration. Superman will always be that. And the counterpart to Batman's more darker tone. And I don't know if there'll ever be anybody like him in that sense. There have been some who came and tried. I've collected comics on my well, I stopped in 2008, 2010. But you, you got this iconic thing that is known all over the world. Christopher Reeve will always be cherished in my mind i wish everybody the best take care and i'll talk to you all next time bye bye